Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, depending on where you are. Welcome back to the National Institute for Directing and Ensemble Creation Virtual Weekend. Hello, hello, everyone. Um, I am Andrea Asaf. I am the Artistic Director of Art to Action. And I am uh, very happy to introduce this wonderful conversation that we are about to have about mentorship on behalf of Art to Action and Pangea World Theater. However, I would like to begin with a land acknowledgement. And I will invite um, Suzanne from Pangea World Theater to join us for land acknowledgement this morning. Hello. Hello, Suzanne. Hi, Andrea. <laughs> Good morning slash afternoon. Um, I'm very excited to be here with all of you and I'm so excited for this panel. Um, first, I would like to say that Pangea World Theater and Art to Action acknowledge that we are on the sacred traditional lands of the first peoples of Turtle Island. For Pangea, it is an honor to live, work, and create art and community alongside Dakota, Ojibwe, and all first peoples in the Twin Cities of Minnesota. Art to Action is based in Tampa, Florida. We are on the land of the Seminole people, and we would like to pay respect to Indigenous peoples past, present, and future. And as we grow in our work of decolonization, we endeavor to build relationships at the speed of trust and move from acknowledgement to action. We invite you to say hello in the chat and introduce yourselves and acknowledge the first peoples of the lands where you are currently. Please name them in the chat. And if you would like to learn more, um, about the first peoples of your land that you're on, you can visit nativeland.ca. And I think we'll drop that in the chat as well. Thank you, Suzanne, for joining me in land acknowledgement this morning. Um, so I am very excited to introduce our amazing panel. You are in for such a wonderful conversation uh, today. And if we could have that panel slide, I would love to uh, show people who, uh, everyone who's watching, um, who we're about to spend our time with and introduce um, the folks who are gonna be on the panel. Uh, so if you've never been to the National Institute for Directing and Ensemble Creation, or if you haven't been in recent years, um, the thing that we would like you to know is that we have uh, really gone through an evolution and made quite a shift from um, where we began with peer exchange. Uh, we evolved from peer professional peer exchange to thinking about how we really um, transfer uh, knowledge about directing an ensemble process to the next generation. And we had a next generation institute. And through that process, um, we kept hearing the same thing, that people wanted more mentorship. They wanted more relationships. They wanted more learning that was based on long-term relationships. And so in 2018 and 2019, we shifted the model of the Institute to a mentorship model. And what that meant is that we invited uh, master artists, um, artists in the field um, who were leaders of ensembles, uh, ensemble companies, or um, directors or teachers or some combination thereof. And then we invited them to invite their mentee. And so the conversation that we're going to have today, we get to hear from pairs of mentors and mentees. So the artists that we invited to be part of the Institute process and the mentees that they invited to bring with them. And we all journeyed together uh, for a week to two weeks in a process of uh, collaborative learning in this new mentorship model. Um, when we first did it in 2018, it felt like the right direction to continue. And we continued it in 2019. So um, these are the pairs of mentor-mentee uh, partnerships that you're gonna get to hear from today. Leslie Ishii and Kiki Rivera, Idris Cooper and Kehindi and Curtis Kirby the third and the punker. Uh, from Pangea World Theater, and all of it will be moderated by the wonderful Alex Mehta. So without further ado, I would like to turn it over to Alex. Thank you, Andrea. Um, thank you so much, everybody, uh, with both of your organizations for hosting this panel. Um, it's incredibly close to my heart, 
And I just deeply appreciate time and space being made for this really important topic that really I think lives and sits at the center of our work and our field. Um, so I'm Alex Mehta, I use the pronoun she, her, hers. I'm calling in from Tonga land here in Boyle Heights, East Los Angeles. Um, and I welcome you all to be a part of this conversation. So I am a collaboration obsessed human. I thrive and have found my healing through ensemble practice and um, the healing art of theater. So I welcome us all to join in on this conversation um, as you feel comfortable. There will be a specific moment um, towards the end where we're asking people to join with some questions. We'll go through that when it comes, but throughout, please um, populate that chat with responses and answers of your own for what I'm gonna ask to these amazing, amazing panelists. Before we get into it, oh, sorry, I'm already getting emotional. Um, I do wanna take a moment and name that um, I was invited to the Institute last year um, for my first time through my mentor, uh, the recently departed Diane Rodriguez, an amazing human friend and true shepherdess of many mentees all across the country. Diane Rodriguez had an incredible career that was really launched with the Teatro Campesino. Um, and so she really started her theatrical career um, in the streets, in the fields, on flatbed trucks, doing activism work um, through theater. Um, and that has really informed me and my practice. And um, although it has been a really challenging and difficult thing to grieve, somebody that meant so much to me um, through COVID, through the uprisings, um, I've also found an amazing amount of spiritual strength and growth by being able to connect with other mentees of Diane's throughout this process. And there are so many of us, I can't even name them all, but I just wanna bring them into the space with me and say that we are dedicating uh, this panel to our mentor, Diane Rodriguez, who spent so much of her time banging doors open and holding them open for the rest of us to enter. So I really invite you all, if you had a relationship with her or just heard about her incredible work, if you could take a moment and bring her into the space with you and anybody who has shown you the same generosity of spirit that Diane showed to many of us by keeping those doors open. I'd like to move us in to an opening ritual. So, so many of us, uh, there was a question asked at a panel yesterday about what are, what are commonalities between all of our practices? And um, I, I think ritual might be one, one commonality. We all have different practices and different rituals about creating space. So many of them center around the circle. Um, so I'd like everyone, if you have a moment to take a piece of paper and a pen, and we're going to borrow a little bit from Pangea World Theater and use the idea of two minutes, but I'm gonna ask you to use them actively. So if you haven't had a moment to breathe today, please use these two minutes. Um, to breathe, to ground yourself, to place your feet on the floor, to reconnect, to get comfortable, to accommodate those nalgas, those butts in those chairs. And I'm going to ask you to write or draw on that piece of paper anybody that you need to bring into the space with you to help us create and open a sacred space together. So we'll just take that time in silence. During this time, I'd love to invite the panelists to turn their screens on and participate with us through this. And um, at the end of my imaginary two minutes, I'm gonna ask everybody to actually turn their cameras on and hold up their piece of paper to the uh, camera so we can see what everybody wrote. Is that all right with everybody? So again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna repeat the prompt. Who would you bring into this sacred space together? They can be here, they can be on another plane, write their name or draw them or an object that makes you think of them on a piece of paper. And in about another 30 seconds to a minute, I'm gonna ask you to hold that up to the camera. And panelists at any point in time, please turn your cameras on. We are asking everybody to join you in a moment in that activity. Don't think too hard, don't draw too perfect. Really just bring in that energy and that essence of these humans who create sacred space with you.
y'all almost ready to bring them in and share them out? I'm already feeling the air heat up with some energy. I know some of us struggle with that energy transfer behind the screen, but I am a believer that if you are sending it out, you can also receive it. And with each breath, I feel more and more of that energy. And I'm gonna ask everybody to go ahead and get ready to hold up your piece of paper to the screen, turn that camera on, show us who you're bringing in. Beautiful. Okay, I'm going to try to get some screenshots. Yes. Yes, beautiful. Hold them up, hold them up. We're waiting for a few more. Oh my goodness, thank you. One more moment. Oh my goodness, yes, bring them all in here. Oh, I love that. Thank you all so much. And as you Go ahead and put it down and turn your cameras off. Take a deep breath collectively together as we get ready to dive into this panel all about mentorship. I thank you all for joining me in that activity. The space has been made. We are here together. All right. I have asked our panel to do self-introductions. They can include anything they like. And I do have two guiding questions, all right? So I uh, learned this practice both, both from Sharon Bridgeforth, but uh, I think first from Daniel Alexander Jones, I wanna bring, bring that energy into this space. Um, so who, I'm asking our panelists, who is your artistic lineage, your ancestral line of teachers and artists? And what practice or ethos are you planning on passing on? So whoever, whenever we're ready, I'd love um, our first group of panelists to share out together. You have about two minutes and I'll try to keep time so we can we can all get our answers in. All right. Idris, will you kick us off? Hi. Hi, everyone. Yes, yeah, so I'm Idris Cooper. I'm the leader of an artistic ensemble, uh, Black Artist Contemporary Cultural Experience in San Francisco on seated Ogoni land, and we pay taxes to the uh, um, Sogorio Te Land Trust. Um, Kayende Koyejo, turn on your camera, Kayende, is part of uh, my ensemble and uh, my mentee and also my teacher. My main uh, teachers are Linda Paris Bailey, who's in the room today, and uh, Rodessa Jones, who is not here, but I called her in on my paper. Um, my other teachers that I claim a mentor, Lori Carlos mentored me through grad school. Uh, my acting lineage comes from Linda Paris Bailey through John O'Neill, Jerome Preston Bates, H.G. Flowers III, E.J. Fisher II, Daniel Chumley, and Bill Duke, Adela Barnes, and Danny Glover. Those were my acting teachers and mentors. Um, Pearl Lubungan, Amara Tabor Smith, and uh, Brent Blair, Lee Worley, and Barbara Dilley came to me through Naropa University and gave me my contemplative lineage that I practice today, even as a non-Buddhist. And my directing mentors are Shabaka Henley, Sati Jamal, Oscar Eustace, Reggie Montgomery, and Professor Alan McVay at the University of uh, Iowa. Um, that's me. Thank you so much. If we were in person, man, how amazing would it be to chart that and have their names on the wall? So thank you for sharing yeah. that. All right, Kahinda, can you can you add on? Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Kahinda Koyejo, and I am a member of BACCE, this Black um, Artist uh, Contemporary Cultural Experience. My mentor is Idris. Uh, Cooper, Anifa Woshe, and um, some of my other mentors are also Rodessa Jones, um, Ruth Beckford, who's um, passed on to the ancestral world, um, Gloria Weinstock, which was my first uh, acting teacher. And um, there's so many, excuse me, um, <clears throat> but I'm, I'm feeling their energy and um, 
And though I may not, through my nerves, I may not be able to mention their names, but I do send them um, so much love and appreciation right now. And also Idris Cooper is, um, she's my mentor, my sister, my friend. Um, she's my teacher, my guide. And, um, and she's in the room today. So, hey, Idris, I appreciate you so much. Um, and I think that's it. I, 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 did I forget anything? No, but um, if you wanna add anything about you or your, pra like anything that you are passing on. Right, right, right. I think um, right now what's coming to my mind that I would like to pass on in terms of my process is, um, is, is, is staying true to self. Um, I did a lot of studying um, in communities other than my own community. And I, you know, found myself constantly questioning myself and not really knowing and understanding myself <clears throat> because I spent so much time studying other people. And so um, I would definitely want to leave that. Study yourself, know yourself, love yourself, be true to yourself so that the work that we create and leave on um, reflects that and speaks to the importance of that. Thank you. What a way to kick it off. I needed to hear those words today and I'm sure so many other people did. So thank you. Thank I'm gonna you. go ahead and pass it over to Leslie. Hello, thank you so much, Alex. Thank you for your lead. Thank you to Pangeo World Theater, Art to Action and this uh, National Institute. An honor and a pleasure to be here and to be with my mentee, Kiki Rivera, and just this great reunion. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, the, the, gosh, the um, artistic lineage, the ancestral line, so many teachers. I always have to get, pay homage to my grandmother, Misao Sakamoto, my mother and father, Georgia Marie Ishii, all um, uh, descendants and survivors of the U.S. concentration camps during World War II. I'm fourth generation. And um, um, yeah, just proud to be Japanese American and um, learning my own political education through that lens. Um, I also pay homage to B. Kiyohara. I too pay homage to Adila Barnes, one of my first acting teachers, and um, Lou Bellamy, actually. But that takes me to Yuri Kochiyama and um, my brother Mike, who are tremendous activists bringing art creativity together um, in direct action. Um, I also want to pay homage because I've had the great honor and fortune of working with legacy BIPOC theaters, uh, Native Voices, East West Players, Penumbra, El Teatro Campesino, and um, th they have greatly shaped who I am and how I pursue, but also how I've been able to reclaim myself from a more Western white paradigm of training. Um, what I would pass along, so many things, <laughs> um, but I think what comes to mind is I never forget that us telling our stories is healing. Us reclaiming our stories is um, a way for me to actually gain my analysis and my political education, the truth, uh, so that I have a, a strong political education. And with that, because I've come from being in a larger, more Western um, conservatory, I always say, please, for myself and others, please always have your own self-determination and your own rhythm, your own breath rhythm even. So thank you. I, I'm currently on Clinket on knee of the Occoquan and Takoquan peoples, also known as Douglas and Juneau, Alaska. <clears throat> Leslie, oh, you gave me that breath I needed. All right, Kiki, come on down. Continue the passing. Malo lava le paia malema malu ale tato mafutanga. My manga tetele se ioo itato fanawiti talofa. First and foremost, I give praise to our great creator for the love and kindness to all of us. I'd like to give thanks to Pangea World Theater and Art to Action and HowlRound for gathering us here today. I'm so thankful for this opportunity to be here before you all and speak. Oloingoa uh, Kiana or Kiki Rivera. I'm a child of Andra Souza and Pui Pui Fuomatsu, the granddaughter of Mary Sino uh, and Ingracio Rivera. 
uh, and the granddaughter also of Makarita Sangatu and Pui Pui Fomatu. I am from Waianae o Ahu, Hawaii, and currently I am on the Aina of the Tongva and Keech people. Um, my artistic lineage and of teachers and artists, you know, there are so many people and I was writing down all these names and I thought, oh, I don't wanna, I don't want to uh, forget anyone's names. And so I thought, okay, the thing that really matters to me is the people who come to mind when I am about to make a major decision or whenever I am performing or directing. Uh, those people uh, include, of course, Leslie Ishii, Haile Opua Baker, Fata Simonu Klutz, Fran Luhan, Victor Roger, Elizabeth Wickman, Walzak, Lu Genjang, Victoria Nubel, Sammy Choi, Julie Yetzi, Andrew Valentine, Tamara Hunt Montgomery, Glenn Cannon, Terrence Knapp, Steve Schick, Alea Ken, Eric Enos, Carmen Morgan, and everybody at Art Equity. So many people. Um, the practice or ethos that I'm passing on comes from uh, is Teo Leva. And that is a Samoan philosophy that focuses on sacred and secular relationships. And I feel especially uh, lately that a lot of people are teaching me the importance of community and the importance, the relationship between myself and other people and the relationship also between myself and the land and the place I come from. And I think that is always very important in going forward in creation and especially the creations that we um, participate in, in this space that I love um, through the Institute um, and what drives ritual. So te uleva, mahalo. Thank you, Kiki. I'm gonna bring up our last pair to Punker and Kirby. Hi, Alex. Um, thank you for um, inviting me to be a part of this um, uh, artistic lineage, um, ancestral line of teachers and artists. It's like you stand in front of an ocean and you're supposed to introduce that. <laughs> and you have a thimble called voice. Um, uh, but I come from India. I, uh, I originate uh, from India and so my grounding um, has been first at home. You know, my mother uh, is a poet. Um, so I grew up uh, in a house and my sisters uh, used, uh, used to dance. Um, so there were always rehearsals at home. Um, and uh, so I grew up in that house. Uh, um, and then, <clears throat> to, um, then we were sent to missionary schools, you know, which were all English medium schools. Um, and the entire education period in uh, is in English and a very Western and colonized. Um, and every city that um, we lived in has its own language. Uh, you know, so we always grew up with a sort of a multilingual uh, vernacular. So our breath was always multilingual, you know, English in school, you know, going to church, uh, sitting down for mass, uh, <laughs> coming home, seeing all the rituals at home and every day some festival which you participate in. Uh, the grandmothers would strongly say that, you know, uh, why uh, speak in your mother tongue, don't speak in English, don't speak <laughs> uh, that. And then when you go out to the for shopping, you know, to shop anything is a local language, which is Hindi uh, or wherever we lived, every almost city has its own language in India. So, so I think these multi, you know, um, it's always these intersectionalities of multiple um, uh, truths, you know, so, um, socio political, racial, uh, lang religion, language. Uh, to, that's, that I think is the ocean in which I always swam. Um, um, yes, the, uh, so, you know, at home, the non Western education came from Natya Shastra, which is, um, you know, the uh, treatise like Aris what is the Aristotelian poetics. Um, uh, so it was Natya Shastra. Um, it's a second century, it's written in second century BC. Um, so, um, 
So, and I had a, but the person who really transformed my life outside of home, mothers, grandmothers, teachers, uh, was one teacher called Vishnu Bhatt, um, a professor called Vishnu Bhatt. He, he always would tell me that, you know, you know a lot about others. You know, and he meant the Western world. He said, a person like you should know about your own. And, and I did not know what it meant because I was so colonized um, for a large part of my life and when I was an undergrad. And then he, I went to him and he taught me Sanskrit. And so the language in which all these books are written. And then my whole world uh, just expanded open. And, and, uh, and then I read Natya Shastra and he taught me. I mean, and it was all from oral culture. You know, he would never let me read the text. He would say, okay, today we'll re- talk about the politics of space and he'll keep the book. And I'm still struggling on the pages. He says, leave the book and, and then listen. So I think listening as a tradition, listening from this teacher, Vishnu Bhatt, and, it was, and he was such a generous soul. It was never this over that. It was this exists and this exists. Now make constant comparisons. And, and, I, think, and I think that um, really uh, um, spoke to me. And, and, and coming from a street, a street theater background, uh, so it was always rooted. Um, that's why I never understand when they write, say, I don't know what to write about. And my question to them is, aren't you alive? Um, uh, so the street theater is a, is a strong lineage, I must say, that I have. Um, and what practice or ethos are you passing on? Um, anything that my mentee would like to receive. Um, e- everything that I have been taught, I will pass on. Uh, I have uh, in, I have been blessed by teachers. Um, if hundred was required from them, they gave me million um, in teaching, in in, in thinking, and sometimes very rigorous, uh, um, uh, you know, disciplining uh, because of the martial arts background. But artistic background, um, you know, I think what I would like to pass on um, is craft, uh, rigor rigor of craft, you know, and the unspoken, you know, in Natya Shastra, Alex, where they say that, you know, uh, the rigor and craft is just the boat on top of the ocean. And the whole ocean is the unspoken. So unspoken is the philosophy where all this lies about how to be a better human being, you know, craft. My teacher always say, you know, don't don't uh, get arrogant about craft. Even a dog is taught in a circus to jump through a circle of fire. That, but um, you're an artist. Understand the philosophy. And so everything, I think, to put it down in three words, craft, rigor, rigor of craft, and philosophy. And whatever Kirby and um, would want to have, uh, I will pass on to Kirby. So those are the three things I would say. Oh my God, I'm okay. I got to say this metaphor of the ocean and the unspoken, I'm, in, I'm gonna invite us all to jump and dive into it with you. It's the metaphor is stunning and really gonna stay with me. So thank you for sharing that. Thanks. Um, I'm gonna pass it to Kirby. Yo, what's up? Uh, how's it going? I see uh, in the chat, a lot of friends and family in there. And so it's uh, good to be here um, for you those that do not know me, um, Buju, uh, Wendigo and Dishnakaz, Mayangan and Dodem. Uh, uh, I'm from the Boys Fort Band of uh, Anishinaabe uh, here in Minnesota, about 90 minutes from the border. I am also um, African American and indigenous from um, the lower half of the America. So um, it's totally an honor to be here and to be with you. Uh, definitely honored to be in this space. Uh, Who I am, I work with a group of youth, uh, indigenous youth right here in the Twin Cities, um, probably maybe uh, two or three miles away from where George Floyd was uh, murdered. Um, And um, that is the community that I serve. I also am a uh, directing fellow at Pangea World Theater and uh, a, a member of their ensemble. So uh, that, that, that is where I start. My uh, teachers in life have been all the elders that have came before me that have put um, in, it could have been, it could be 30 seconds um, to, you know, hours and hours of time, you know, just watching them observing. Uh, my grandmother is Sharon Day uh, and I've learned everything from her. Um, I was raised by her. 
from the day that I came from home from the hospital and she's been a teacher and um, from that moment forward and anybody that she's put in my life, uh, that's how I uh, met DePlonker and Mina and Leslie and, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the names go on, Muriel Tarrant, uh, Linda, Linda Paris Bailey, everybody has had a moment in my life and in, in teaching me something and um, my culture has deeply rooted and been a guide and a tool for me. You know, growing up um, in the, as a Anishinaabe, we have ceremonies, we have celebrations and all of those are art form. Everything from those from dancing to singing to just watching your elders learn and grow. Those are the, those are the people that have taught me and they have guided me this far and they continue to guide me. And, uh, you know, I, 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 the reason why I do theater, why I tell storytelling is because that's how my people got here to this point, you know, without storytelling, without uh, performance, without songs and dance, um, that's what makes us so special and unique. And that's, that's why I'm here today. And I, I work to serve my youth and anyone that comes and the generations that come after me. And so what I want to pass forward is just um, like the Ponker said, anything that I can pass forward and just, you know, worth ethic and, you know, um, really, uh, I want to pass on to them. I think collaboration, co um, connecting with people, uh, that will take you so far in life. And um, if you work hard and you, you meet people and you, you, you are true and you're good to them, they will be good back to you. So um, the punker took my other two minutes. So that's all I have. <laughs> Kirby, thank you. Um, <laughs> you're allowed to continue if you'd like. I do. No, just... no, no, no. We, we got more to talk about. So all right. I'm going to see like that. <laughs> um, thank you. I just want to wrap up what I think I've heard a little bit from everybody. We've heard about staying true to yourself. We've heard about, um, um, oh my gosh, how did Leslie put it about self, uh, not enterprise. Oh man, the word is self-determination. Self-determination, thank you. We've heard about passing on the stories um, and our dances on how they are essential to us. We've heard about swimming in the unknown and expanding our minds and decolonizing. Um, we've heard about our lands and our those who have come before and the richness of our families and so much more. But as I like just even start repeating what we've already heard in the first few minutes, I'm already starting to feel myself expand and grow with grow patience um, through this process. And I just wanna remind us all that, that that is what Ensemble does, is it refills our tank, doesn't it? Um, so on that note, I would like all of us to answer on the panel the, the following. Let us reflect on the experience of being officially paired as mentor and mentee about a year and a half ago. What sticks out about the experience right at the Institute itself? What are you still processing? And most importantly, what did the formal title do to your relationship? So I ask that because maybe you were already mentor mentee, perhaps you were already collaborating and behaving in that way, but didn't have that label. And did the label shift anything in your dynamic? So um, I'm gonna give everybody about two minutes to answer. Is there anybody who really would like to go first? All right, well, I'm gonna, Kirby, you're, I'm, you're, your voice is still so present with me. Do you mind kicking us off with this? Yeah, um, for sure. Um, can you run back that question? No, I'm just playing. I got it. <laughs> uh, what sticks to me, uh, I've, I've, I think last, last year I was, uh, it was like my third time. So I felt like, um, and, and it changes every year. But honestly, like I, I've been a mentee of uh, DePonker um, for some, some while now. So that wasn't new to me. But like I said, I think some of the names I've echoed before have built a long um, lasting relationships. Um, and I, like uh, Linda, Linda and Jonathan brought us down to, you know, perform my, my ensemble, my youth ensemble down to Tennessee. And that was like a push, like a, a mind blower for them because, you know, they only, a lot of them don't travel without without their square mile radius. You know, one time I brought my kids to a, a restaurant that was in Roseville and it's a local suburb here. And he said, wow, I've never been to Roseville. And I promise you it's like six miles up the highway from his house, you know? So for them to go like to Tennessee and to be in a completely different atmosphere than, you know, um, African Amer pr predominantly African-American, you know, and they're indigenous and for us to share that culture exchange. And there's many more, I've, you know, I recently directed, uh, was assistant director for Leslie Ishii. So I think 
the the institute is so much more than just uh 12 days or just it's really truly lifelong um lifelong mentorships that you get out of it not just by your original mentor but by all these great um professionals these titans these you know these uh people that are so colossal and uh so that we, we wouldn't have this field we wouldn't have a place in this field if it wasn't for them so i think for me i I never went to school to do theater. Like I said, I grew up dancing, singing, you know, I was in youth ensembles and just to, to be around this and to get that, it's like getting a, uh, you know, you're getting a master's in 12 days. So um, it's truly just amazing in that way. And um, I'll pass it on from there. Thank you. Who else is feeling moved? All right, Defunker, I see you unmuted, come on. Yeah. Um... You know, um, uh, I'm, ju I'm just focusing on the first question that you said, ancestral. So in India, there are no theater schools, you know. Some might have started uh, recently, you know, like in Delhi, there's an NSD. But generally, we grew up with no, the, it's not taught in schools, no theater, no performance. So you learn it, you know, so you seek mentors, you seek teachers. I mean, there is no MFA, BFA. In fact, when I went with my Western degrees, um, you know, many of my teachers bent down on their knees and they were buying to me like this. Oh, the master of fine arts have arrived. And it was a joke, um, you, you know, uh, because so you search for mentors and and who and whenever when a teacher sort of accepts you, uh, you it, it's a blessing and you're very lucky to be accepted back home, you know, that that he really calls you a teacher and then a whole life journey begins. And um, so, um, so when uh, specifically to the, your question of um, over here, um, you know, when the word mentor and mentee we, we invited um, and those terms, actually I'm so lucky that, uh, you know, I consider Sharon Day to be my mentor um, uh, uh, in every way, in my art, in my philosophy, in my creative thinking, in my critical analysis, um, uh, generosity of spirit, um, uh, you know, uh, ability to forgive. I mean, I'm not saying I have mastered it. I think I have to take many births to be uh, anything what Sharon is. But she's been a present in my life. And then there are many teachers over here whom, you know, uh, Linda, Nobuko elders um, uh, whom, whom I've met in through this um, conference. Um, uh, but, you know, uh, I think I was, uh, you know, the terminology does not begin the journey. The journey had already begun, um, you know, for, 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 for me when I was invited in, um, you know, in this, in, this, in, in, the, in this rich Ojibwe, um, culture and, and I saw alliances, I saw similarities, the ancientness, respect of elders, respect of rituals, storytelling, circularity, all these just spoke to my heart. And for a change, I was in walking into a room where I just, just felt that, my God, I'm home. And this was far away from home, uh, you know, in a, in a distant foreign land. And uh, so, so I, 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 I just felt that, you know, and because of my commitment to Sharon, and the learning, and when uh, when we were supporting um, Kirby, you know, uh, I, I just became completely accountable. You know, accountable accountability got heightened. I think that's what it was. I mean, the love was always there as a family. It was always there um, as a brother. It was there. You know, but but I think when it when that those terms are are you know is a is a term of accountability. So because in India. Nobody first, nobody asks you first that, you know, what's your name? The first thing they'll say, whose student are you? And, you know, that's what they want to know. And your name is inconsequential. It might come or might not come. So whose student are you? And so therefore, when you are portraying a student's name, your teacher's name, you better shape up. You know, you tell yourself that. So to me, when I walk into a room and I say, uh, you know, I respect Sharon, I respect Nobuko, I respect Linda, you know, these names, they, I better shape up to be worthy of that, those names, you know. Uh, so to me, um, uh, it just made me more accountable uh, to my learning from this side of the lineage and then complete commitment and became very protective of, uh, of Kirby. And, uh, you know, Ismail is also another mentee. So I became very sort of emotionally 
uh, protective outside of the of, of the rigor of, of the craft. Absolutely. I, I love that you're bringing in that this, these relationships are not just about teaching a practice. Um, and in fact, like school, what school doesn't tell you is how to, how to build relationships and how to work through challenges and how to relate to humans. And I know that my mentors have passed on, the number one thing they've passed on is grace to me. Um, so thank you for bringing that up to Punker. All right, who else would like to answer this question from our panel? Please feel free to unmute yourself. Hi, I'll go. So um, I'll jump right in with uh, uh, the Punker mentioning Linda Paris Bailey, who at Noble Cole, and Linda was the one who um, recommended me to the directing institute and is responsible for my being here. And uh, she was my first acting teacher, one of the first, the first person to take me seriously as a theater artist when I was about 10 years old. And so the, the um, possibility was not there for me to reconnect with her. And so as I left California, I was kind of aware that I didn't really know what I was going into. And I didn't have Linda there as that anchor. And I, I knew Noble Cole was going to be there, and I hadn't seen her in maybe 30 years, I think it was. And Sharon Bridgeforth, who I hadn't seen in probably 10 years and had just met once or twice, and Carol McCord, who I hadn't seen in 30 years. So I had these possibilities of reconnecting with people, but kind of in a space where I didn't know who was going to be there or what to expect. One of the first things that struck me was that first night at the dinner in the restaurant where uh, that's now burned to the ground. And a year later, I watched the owner of that restaurant um, so gracefully as his restaurant was burning, remind the world that people were more important than buildings. But that night he started to speak and something started to shift. I, I felt, oh, something's really different about this, right? And I looked around the restaurant and then DuPonker got up and spoke. And there was just something really familiar, but different about the way people were speaking and what they were speaking to. And I glanced around the room and for the first time noticed that the room was full of people of color exclusively. And then another glance was that there were mostly women in the room. And that was shocking. And then also told me what I was experiencing was this home, this kind of familiarity, this family. And I was immediately welcomed in by that experience. Um, what stands out for me besides that first moment was the reunion of, you know, Nobuko and Carol and I, we met in that connection. And then I started to uncover all these connections that I had to people in the room through their teachers and through their cohorts. And even uh, we were going through one ancestral, um, this moment sticks out big, an ancestral lineage exercise and Cece started to talk about her grandfather, who I realized was part of my family and had driven me to school every day of my elementary school. And so I had never met her. That moment stands out to me, just that uh, connection and, and meeting Anton and realizing that I knew his mother those kinds of things. And then the third thing that stands out is the exchange that happens. Because you often go to conferences and you get, um, there's a, a tremendous exchange of processes and containers and exercises and games. And a lot of times I come back home and I have uh, notes that I go through to try to remember. I didn't have that. The notes were in my body. The processes were done in a way that was so embedded that I continue to this day, I brought, I'm bringing in agreements to everything I do, everything I do, which I went back to teach at this, a school stage bridge, which is a training program for people 50 and over. And I brought the agreements and looked like a genius when I was there. Um, we embarked on our first original production 
inspired by jazz, Sharon Bridgeforth jazz workshops. So, so much of what um, I experienced there. And then the last thing I want to say is about the mentor mentee relationship. So, I think Candace probably named me her mentor before to me, but it really didn't stick until it was named at the Institute. And I really felt the responsibility because in my mentorships, those, a lot of the people that I've named, not all of them, but a lot of them, there were struggles in those relationships. There were struggles even to claim those people as my mentor because some of them have even been canceled in the theater community, right? Some of them have been me too'd out. They're not always the ideal role model, but they taught me something. So I claim them as a mentor. What I want to be is an ideal role model mentor. I don't want to have a fraught relationship with my mentee. I don't want to be practicing things that embarrass my mentee or that make my mentee have to uh, defend me or explain why I'm being an ass. So uh, that is really important and has really been cemented since I've been at the Institute, that responsibility and all the way back because Linda represented me here I have to, like Deep Bonker said, I have to be worthy. I have to be worthy of LPB's legacy in this institute and in the world. And so I hope I make you proud, Mom. I, oh my God, I'm just so emotional. I know that we'd be like in like such loud applause for everything you just said. <laughs> A lot. Thank you. Um, if I could uh, just keep us moving for sake of time, we're going to be good to time. So it's good back to us. Um, who else? We have three more, I think. I'd love yeah, to jump right on in and I'll make it quick. Um, <clears throat> the What I experienced was a rebirth being in, in part of the um, um, the conference uh, two, a year and a half ago. I... I came in, you know, um, not really sure what I was getting myself into. Idris invited me and I said, okay. And I thought it was gonna be about theater and it was, but it was more so about freedom. And it was more so about reclaiming our, vo our voices. And I did that, I, <clears throat> I'm an actor. So I use my voice in that way, but in real life, I tend to, you know, shrink. I tend to be silenced. And that's just based on kind of how I was raised and brought up. <clears throat> and so I was freed in those two weeks. <laughs> and it was more than anything that I had ever experienced in all of my years of, of education. And I, you know, I went to two private colleges majority of the students there were of the were white I was one of few of you know in my class and um and you know leaving um leaving Minneapolis and leaving this experience I realized my responsibility to use my voice my responsibility to use my art as a way to advocate um to disrupt you know to use <clears throat> my my spirit um, to help show other people what freedom really is. And it really is about owning yourself, owning your story, um, owning your voice. And so I really do appreciate, you know, being offered the opportunity to participate. Uh, the process uh, was very freeing. Um, I loved being able to meet so many people. I mean, I didn't know, I, I don't really think I knew anybody before I, I came there. I, you know, Idris um, probably was, you know, she was the person that I knew very well, but I met and developed, you know, re relationships in that time with, with um, individuals that I'll never forget. And so, um, and, and it deepened the relationship with, uh, with me and Idris as well because um, I didn't know a lot about Idris. I mean, I, I, she's my sister and my friend, but there are a lot of things that I found out about her in that experience that just shifted, you know, everything that I, um, everything in me 
um, and how I felt about art and how I felt about being a black woman in art. And it just shifted, shattered all of that. And it's like, I got to restart and I got to restart on our, you know, on our relationship. I got to restart on our, um, on my work and a restart on life period. So I came back and I spoke up. I spoke up in on several instances and um, and it wasn't always, you know, received well, but I felt good about it because I felt like, you know, if I got a voice, then I might as well use it and I need to use it to um, to protect, to heal, to um, to enlighten um, and to guide people. And so I again, I thank you all for this opportunity. And um, yeah, it was a, it was a it was a eye opener, you know. It busted my spirit right on open. Thank you. Oh, uh, yes. All right. Kiki and Leslie, either of you'd like to take it? Sure, I'll, I'll take it. Um, so I think there has been an invisible cord that has attached itself that, that was there probably that I never knew about um, between Leslie and I. We met. Uh, at Art Equity 2018. And we didn't have a lot of encounters together, but the ones that we did was very special and it was very deep. And when she invited me to this, to NIDEC, I, you know, there are so many people that we met in that cohort. And to think that the ancestors placed my name in her, in her head uh, was such a blessing. And I feel like, uh, I feel like this has been like coming home, like everyone has said, and that lamp, uh, that lamp and that fire is the heart of the revolution. And, uh, and there have, there's all of these invisible cords that have been pulled, uh, that has pulled us together, that has brought us back home to the village uh, of all of these movers and shakers and, and the change that I've been longing for uh, in, in theater. Yeah, so I just, yes, everything that everyone has said is, has been my experience and I am so grateful. Thank you. Well, I have to just jump right in. <laughs> and Kiki, please join me. Um, you know, we were kind of reminiscing about, yeah, how did this happen? Uh, we met at Art Equity. We were in the same affinity space. And I might have, I think I was maybe uh, facilitating that particular group at that time. Um, but uh, it, yeah, and then I remember uh, Deepankar, um, uh, Mina and, and Andrea uh, inviting me to the Institute and saying, oh, now this time you get to have a mentee. I was like, oh, first of all, I just go, uh oh, I, I'm accountable. <laughs> you know, I, I need to rise and be my best self, which you hope you always do anyway. But um, there's something about that. And I've had other mentees and I was just thinking about this particular space. Um, I always try to think specifically what works well for that person or for what the needs might be or, or just uh, supporting the creation of community in this space. And um, one day, uh, because I'm with the Consortium of Asian American Theaters and Artists, I was talking to Leilani Chan, who's a wonderful uh, member of this family too. Uh, I said, Leilani, I get to choose a mentee. What do you think about Kiki? And Leilani was like, yes. <laughs> that was it, yes. It was like, yay. And, and it had just kind of come to me because I do a little bit of meditation. And it was just sort of, Kiki, I think it's Kiki. And then, um, you know, we were, we're planning still, it's been put off because of COVID, but to take the uh, conference and festival, the National Asian American Theater Conference and Festival to Hawaii. So I thought, oh, this is maybe just a beautiful um, confluence of activities and engagement together. And what can this mean for Kiki? So uh, that, that was just, a, that it just felt right, right purpose, as I say, yeah. I would like to add to the language of, um, of this experience and the village and how our mentors are our, in the village, they're our parents, they're that, that our makua, our, our figures that 
that strengthen us and that provide that foundation. And I needed to just put that into that space too. Beautiful. Thank you. Well, I can honestly say too that I might be sort of the designated mentors, as you will. And I take on that uh, with <laughs> such um, humility and I honor it to honor Kiki. And I have to say, a lot of the time, Kiki is my mentor. <laughs> so I learned just as much as a beautiful exchange. Yeah. Thank you. I think that's like a, an amazing segue, Leslie, because I think mentor mentee, we sometimes think it's only one direction, but it absolutely is six, a cycle and a circle. Um, and I remember I'm going to shift a little bit from our agenda here, but um, when we had first met for the for the prep of this, Leslie, you had said something that really captured me, which was about the, the intertwining of life and craft. And I don't know if you want to, if you can elaborate a little bit on that with Kiki on, on how that functions since the, 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 the gathering. Sure. Thank you. Um, well, I think I was reminiscing when we had our prep meeting about you know, often in a, like an academic setting when you're um, taking on or you have mentees, mentor relationships, it's so about um, that academic sort of structure and achievement in a particular way, you know, can be very oppressive, actually, very dehumanizing. But I, I was sharing with this group and reminiscing about how, where do you get the opportunity to to intertwine your craft of playing together. And then you walk and you go eat the lamb bowl at the international market. Kiki and I were pining after the, we were remembering the lamb bowl <laughs> and the ice cream place and, and just walk along and talk and maybe lay on the floor after a session. You just kind of, uh-huh, uh-huh, look at the ceiling and breathe. And, you know, just taking the time to really, in a more relaxed way, in a real way, build a relationship. And I recently, I just want to call in a dear friend who's becoming a wonderful friend and colleague, um, Marguerite Hanna, and out of Georgia in theater. And Marguerite says, get to know me before you need me. And I'm like, oh, that is the essence to me of coalition, of solidarity building. And so just getting to take that time where we're playing, building our craft together, experimenting, um, that just meant the world. This is such a different structure at the Institute. And I was also saying to the group, if you walk in and everyone, and you said, well, who's the director? Because it's got such this beautiful horizontal sense of play and collaborative spirit. I think we naturally, we would all stand up or we would all make ourselves known, or we would just look around like, oh, oh, well, we're all playing here. You know, there isn't a hierarchy that way. So um, that struck me tremendously. And that sort of, um, to me spoke to just the way the Institute unfolded. Yeah. And the joys and the depth and the learnings. Yeah. Amazing. Kiki, don't feel like you have to, but do you have anything to add to that? Yeah. I don't think um, that there is a separation between life and craft. They are one in the same. And especially in this group, it really, you, we see that, we see that our life, our craft, our, our desire to change the world are all the same and we cannot separate those things. And I think coming from a background uh, of acad academia, Western academics, um, everything is so separate and that is so oppressing. <laughs> And so when we talk about indigenizing and decolonizing our theater practices, it is not separate. It's all inclusive, it's holistic. And, and this space, this, this fire that keeps, that holds us together is where that has happened. Um, yeah. Yeah, amazing. Yes, we can't cut ourselves open and divide ourselves, right? And yeah, so what I'm, I often think about like, what is it about white body supremacy culture that feels that it is not support, like it does not make better art. And I think it's exactly that, right? It is that if you are not building into your process a way to get to know each other as humans, I don't like to say this often, but I think you're doing it wrong. <laughs> um, and I think a lot of us here share that ethos. All right, Depunker and Kirby, I'm gonna throw it to you, um, kind of going in the same direction. How do you all remain committed to each other's growth in both directions? And do you have any like tangible tools you can share with people about how you engage in that? 
Uh, I haven't <laughs> seen this guy since the Institute, I think. No. <laughs> oh. No, I think the uh, the punker is truly like a friend, family, a brother, a um, everything you could truly um, imagine and more. You know, I, you all know the punker. Most people know him, and so I I, I always feel incredibly grateful that we've um, you know I did a play with him when I was like five years old or somewhere around there. It's called Shadow Lines, and then it was it's so um, you know when we start. When we start working, oh, and I start working with this youth theater ensemble, Sharon, oh, my grandmother said, you're going to work with the punker and he's going to direct the plays and da, 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 you know. And so that went on for a couple of years. And all of a sudden he was like, you're going to, you're going to direct, you know. And it's still like that, you know, our relationship is still like that, you know, he, um, anything he needs, you know, um, when he calls, I go, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter if it's to go hold the ladder, to hold the string, to do theater work, to, to whatever it is, because that's the commitment. Um, that we hold to each other, and and, and it's um, it's the, the same as re reciprocated. Um, and the only reason why I am here is because he makes me believe in myself. You know, sometimes you don't have that, or you're not, when you're young, you don't really know what direction you want to go in life. I grew up, you know, playing football, and I played through college, and you know, I love working with youth. Like um, any which way I can help a youth grow, I will do that. But this this theater um, is an incredible tool, an incredible. And sometimes, I mean, just watching my kids, I want to cry. Watching theater, I just, that's what type of emotion it brings out of you. And um, it has so much power. And the power that it holds um, is the power that I feel and the connection that I feel with the punker. You know, that that connection, that energy, it doesn't matter if I talk to him every day, it doesn't matter if I talk to him every two weeks, you know, every time we go, it's, and it's like, um, Growing up with growing up with my grandmother, and that's my other mentor, you know, she always gives you a little bit, you know, a little bit at a time, a little bit more to the story, a little bit more. And that's how it is with the punker. Like even today, I learned something more from him. You know, so every time that we link up, that we get to um be in a together and just hold conversation, um, it's truly incredible. And we, you know, I assist and direct a lot of plays that he does, um, and so many other things, you know, that we do together and um, ceremonies and things that we share together. Um, it's truly an honor. So I'll pass it to Big D. Thank you, Big B. Um, <laughs> uh, th thank you for what you said. Um, uh, 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 it's uh, 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 you made me cry. Um, um, it's a uh, like uh, I think what Kiki said and what um, you know other people in the panel are uh, echoing. Uh, uh, how how do I remain committed to each other's growth? I mean, as long as Sharon Day is walking on this earth, I will remain committed to our grandson. Uh, and I, I, I uh, that's 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 it. Whether Kirby wants me around or not is immaterial. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm playing. Uh, uh, I'm just committed. I'm committed because our it's a holistic relationship. It's 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 every every day, every time we meet, every play that we do, our, and relationship goes deeper. And and it's the, it's not just the it's not Kirby, just one. You know, the whole we work very closely with the whole community. We are so honored to be invited into the community, into the indigenous ways of working, into the rituals, into, you know, by Sharon and by Kirby and by Kirby's family. So, so you're not just, we meet in class and after 45 minutes, you go to another class and then you go to another class. Yes, all that I've done, but being present to that family, being present to the challenges and, 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 and I think my, uh, how I'm remaining as long, I mean, the hunger, what, what makes me completely glued to Kirby is his hunger for learning uh, uh, and my hunger for learning and Kirby's just deep humility uh, and openness uh, to learning the craft, uh, you know? And so, so if whatever I know, whatever my teachers have taught me, I, I want to sort of share with Kirby and, and I remain committed to him to, you know, with, with the craft, with the, with critical thinking, with listening, with deep listening. And those things, uh, those things Kirby teaches me at every step. Uh, if 50 is required from Kirby when he, towards his students, you know, he, in order to do the workshop, Kirby goes from house to house to house to house, picks these kids up 
you know and then after uh, then we do this powerful workshop and he, then he goes and drops them to each and every i don't know how many teachers whom i've met in my life have done that i mean i i, I don't know uh, but but that's what kirby teaches me and so so my commitment to kirby is very in some ways very selfish because i'm on the field to have thousands of kirbys i'm on the field to have thousands of kiki and lesley and and you know and and idris and 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 kehinde i i uh, that is the world that i envision and and, and to me um, uh, and, and the names i'm not mentioning i always hesitate to mention names because there's some names that i'm not mentioning and you know that uh, people who have contributed to my whatever growth or uh, mistakes you're responsible for it so so i just that that's my commitment uh, to kirby's growth and kirby's um, uh, the you know as as long as hunger exists you know uh, we'll journey together as long, and and he teaches me humility thank you oh absolutely the future the future the future the future the future um, is also now. So Kehinde, I want to throw it to you with this question about, listen, we're all living through COVID. We're all adapting our artistic practices. We're all adapting how we connect. Um, and what about COVID or anything that's happened in this milestone year, 2020? What about it has deepened or released your need for this type of mentor-mentee relationship, whether with Idris or with other mentors and mentees that you might have? <clears throat> well, whew, yes, this has been quite a year. And um, I would say that COVID um, made me stop and really reevaluate my values and, um, and really look at my community. Like Idris and, and I, we don't live far from each other. And so, um, you know, it, I just, just looking more at deepening the relationships that I have with the people that are around me and, um, and also repairing my relationship with myself and healing the relationship with myself. Um, since that experience, a lot of things have come up for me and Idris and I, we often talk about our experience or we'll give, you know, we, we would um, hear something or experience something. We'll give each other that look like, you know, um, no, you know, this reminds us of something that we heard or experienced uh, in um, during our time in Minneapolis. And so, you know, overall COVID has, um, just made me feel so much gratitude, so much gratitude for Idris, for her boldness, for her ability to see in me sometimes what I don't see in myself. Um, and, and also just looking at myself and, and art and really unpacking that, you know, because I was, classically trained and that did something to me <laughs> and thank god i met idris because idris really with care just and and also with with so much care but she like you know did not allow me to shrink or to like back away from something that i feared or you know she um would push me you know push me forward any times when we were you know we would have a production and I would feel unsure about myself. She would be the one to be like, you know, we here, let's do this. And a lot of times that's just what I need. I need to get out of my head and more into my body. And so um, even with our process, you know, like even with us using music to free ourselves before we even go into the work, you know, e you know, yes, Idris has, has really been instrumental in, you know, m me waking up as an artist, as a person, um, and, and so I've been spending a lot of this time during COVID reflecting and asking myself the necessary questions to take me to the next level in my humanity and the next level in my art artistry. And I, um, I owe a lot of that to, to my mentor, my friend, my, my, um, my guide, Idris Cooper, um, 
who has been the first one, she was the first one to free me. I was right, I came, you know, back home from, um, from, from NYU and I was all confused and <laughs> didn't know what kind of artist I was and what kind of artist I wanted to be. And then I saw, met her and I saw the way she approached art. I saw the way she approached the world. And I wanted to, I wanted whatever that was that she had. And I don't remember how we connected, but we did. And we have been tight ever since. And so we, you know, even during this time of COVID, I'm, I'm so grateful to not live too far from her. We have been bonding over gardening, you know, looking at, <clears throat> you know, and appreciating the beauty that's just right around us that so often we may, you know, overlook because it's so easy to overlook some things, sometimes important things because we are so caught up in the, um, the rat race or the whirlpool of, you know, expectations and desires and so on and so forth. So I, I, I'm grateful for COVID. I'm grateful that it has allowed us to deepen our relationship and, um, and grow our own food. Yes. And I think that's it for now. <laughs> Thank you. I'm seeing in the chat so many people are really resonating with a lot of what you had to say. So thank you. Um, right before I hand the mic to Idris, I want to just remind everyone if you have a question um, that you'd like to ask one of the panelists, please put your name in the chat so we can start stacking. And um, Idris, I'll pass it back to you. Same question. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. God is good. The goddesses are to blame. I would say I remember how we met. And it was at the Lorraine Hansberry Theater. And Kehinde is a twin. And you know a twin by their names. Their names are Taiwo and Kehinde in the Yoruba tradition. And when I met a Kehinde, I was struck. It was the first Kehinde I had met outside of my husband's family. And my husband came into the room and I said, look, honey, Kehinde. And he took one look at Kehinde and ran. Do you remember this? ran from the room, left his wallet, left his jacket, left his glasses. I went after him and he was sitting in the car shaking. And he said, I feel like I saw my sister. I feel like, and he, and he had lost his twin and he had found another one in Kehinde. And from that moment, I don't think I was even allowed by the ancestors to ever let Kehinde go. So that, that moment, um, sealed our relationship. Uh, the mentorship actually offered the opportunity that my mentors have given me. I think what mentors do a lot best is introduce you to things and drop you into experiences that change your life. And Rodessa, Linda, they've always given me opportunities. And at some point I was getting these jobs from Rodessa and someone said, when are you ever going to get out of the shadow of Rodessa Jones? You're your own person. You don't need her. And I wanted to slap them because they haven't understood what life and learning is about. And I am still under the shadow of Rodessa Jones. Thank God for that big old palm tree she is right. that shelters me from all the elements. I never want to not be under the shadow of someone. Everything I learned, I learned from someone else. I have invented nothing. And so I, I think that that learning process is so integral. Um, there was a question on the table, like what can this dynamic duo do? We could throw a party, me and Kay and Day. We could throw a hell of a party. And I promise you, if you, Candy and I are throwing the gig and you come, you're going to have a good time. You're going to feel good as hell when you leave. You're going to be well fed. You're going to have all that you need to drink. You're going to be have danced your butt off. And that is how we actually create. And that energy from Kehinde is a visual master. Like if you give her a room and say, we're gonna throw a party, when you come in, it's gonna look like the Ritz ballroom. It's gonna be gorgeous and everything would have been taken care of. And I'm 
COVID. So when we left the Institute, we had already started to change. Both of us had already started to stop working for other people and commit ourselves to the company. And the company had started to change and started to uh, really let go of toxic relationships. And that was starting to happen. And then in November, it'll be a year tomorrow, I lost my husband very suddenly. It was devastating and my company was at my side. That's who my uh, phone calls were to members of my artistic company that had supported me. I, there was no other people that were closer. So that life and art are separate happened right then and then COVID happened. And so between then and now, I think both of us and the company have started growing our own food and taking care of ourselves and our community, taking that into our hands and being responsible for that, not leaving that to someone else. And we have cut toxic relationships to the point where there are so many committees that we refuse to be on that are examining, oh, how do we move to this, you know, this new Me Too, Black Lives Matter to the theater moment. We divorced ourselves of all of that. And one of the things that I love about the Institute was when we got there, we were all people of color. We weren't there to talk about racism and oppression and all of those things. Those were byproducts of the art we were there to create. And to be invited into a space and say, we want to talk to you about your process. Now, we want to talk to you about what it's like to be black and female in the theater. No, we want to talk to you about your process. That privilege has struck me and stuck with me. And in every room I'm in, if we're not talking about process, I'm out. I don't know if that was the question, but I hope I answered something. You answered everything. <laughs> okay, like I am just sitting here a holding you thank you for sharing with us about the loss and the importance of having those people around you that are going to hold you up and i think you also shared with us this reminder um we can talk about art and craft all day but if we're not taking care of ourselves um and putting putting work first or art first like it, it impacts the the work as well so thank you for that incredible reminder oh i'm just so moved i have to share with you i i too lost a partner um, September 11th after the Institute. And um, I don't know that I would have been able to fully survive it the way I did had I not had some of the experiences I had at the Institute that were life-giving um, and that reminded me who I am. So thank you for that. Also just like a very okay. personal reminder. Um, we have 10, and there's lots of love coming for you here uh, in, the, in the chat, Idris. So in our last few minutes, um, I'm gonna, let's do away with any of my, my questions. And I would just love to hear closing thoughts, things you'd like to pass on, tools, feelings, needs, anything that you'd like to share in your last few minutes. Um, and I'd love to hear from everybody. Is there someone just burning to go first? Yeah. I just got to say that the spiritual food in this room is rich and it is plentiful. And, uh, you know, I, my, my spiritual beginnings um, was as a Jehovah's Witness. And they always talked about, <laughs> about this new world, about this paradise earth, about this new system. And I feel like it is here. It is in this room amongst these people. And man, so lucky to be here and to get all of this in. Thank you so much, everybody, for this. Yes, and I would jump right on. Thank you so much, Kiki. It's so good to see your face. Um, <clears throat> I would say that, you know, uh, one of the things that really, um, that I still hold very dear to me is the community that we built there, the family, um, the truth that we built, the healing that happened in the room and the healing that continues to happen. And so I, I would just like to, you know, to 
encourage people to just encourage us all to just really tap into our communities hold each other tight even though we can't physically hold each other um you know send you know send us a, a you know a smile send um a high five whatever because you know, it's it's not easy being in this life. It's a beautiful life. I love living, but it is a hard thing to do. And I am so grateful for my community. I am so grateful for the people that surround me, that lift me up, that hold me up when I can't hold myself up, you know, that um, holds me accountable, that challenges me to be better. So hold tight on to, to your community. You know, don't don't put yourself, you know, Second, always put yourself first. And and healing is the ultimate, you know, pathway to freedom, to a better day, to all of the things that we desire. Um, heal yourself first so that then we can send that all that healing energy out to our community and then out into, you know, the world. And so with that, I would like to just say thank you all, my community. I love you all so, so much. And I am sending vi virtual hugs to you all. And um, I hope to see you all again in person one day soon. Well, since all my, uh, all the mentees went, I'll, I'll cap it off and then pass it on to the big dogs. Uh, Oh, um, just uh, just like I said, honored to be here. On um, without without Pangea World Theater Art to Action, without the Directing Institute, um, I don't know where me and my ensemble would be. Uh, it's it's a pleasure to grow leaps and bounds with you guys and through our ups and downs, and um, just really learning to hold true to who I am as a person and um, being able you guys loving me authentically as my authentic self. And what um, I bring to the table, and I and I love everything that you all bring to the table, as well, and each and every one. And um, every time that you guys are courageous and speak up, it it gives me the courage to speak up. Or every time you guys throw an idea out there or something, I catch that, you know. So like I said, everyone in here is my teacher, um, and I truly mean that. Not on no corny BS, just that's for real. Like I I truly learn something from everyone in here, and I'm honored to see where this world goes. And um, if we all lead with love encourage um that that is what's going to bring us forth you know not not you know um staying in our lanes and continuing to um harness what we have because i remember there's a point in time where i was like oh it would be cool to work at so and so um theater but i think one thing the parker has really taught me is like sometimes you have to sacrifice um things like money or other things in order to make sure that we all arrive at this point and um we're not you know we're not climbing up a ladder together we're raising the ladder together so um, um, I'm excited to see where our journey brings us and um, love. Thank you, Kirby. All right, mentors, we got five minutes collectively to, to um, sum up before we pass it on to our closing. One of you wanna start? Uh, I just wanna second um, all of those things and, and just thank everybody for those special like conversations with Kirby on the side about like improving the native indigenous black relationships and taking all that back with me and watching people mentor their children. Carolyn had her children there and, and I'm reminded of the actions that we did um, while we were there phoning and how Adelina had us on the social media doing protests and connecting ourselves to communities uh, and finding ways to really be active was part of this institute that I'll always, always, always take. And I'm missing people, uh, like I miss Marcella, I miss Kat, I miss Adele, I miss Diane and Walken. And I know you're all here, but you can't see, we can't see you. Uh, thank you, Suzanne and Kayla and Alex for holding this, for Mina and DePonker, like starting this revolution. Um, it continues. I went to Dallas and ran into some a really wild spirit. I can't remember his name right now, but it just told me it slept on Cat, I think Cat or Marcella's couch. And just like the connections continue. And that to me means that the path 
is open and welcoming and you're on it and you're on the right path and the gods are watching and the ancestors are watching out for you. So this is just um, a huge stepping stone in that journey. Thank you all. I miss you guys. I guess I'll go, oh my gosh, y'all. I feel like I'm gonna start weeping. Um, thank you all for all that you you said and shared and I learned from you all. Um, Sir Curtis Kirby the Third, getting to work with you at Pangea. Uh, what a gift that was. Kiki, amazing to work with you and continue our relationship building. Uh, Idris, I miss you. I was just saying how I love when we're out there playing. And uh, uh, Kahinda same that sense of play that we all achieve together and build. And uh, Mina and Depunker, Depunker, Mina's name is on your square, so I can't help but also mention Mina. Um, the fact that you and Andrea bring us all together with the Directors Institute, it's family. It's family and it's love and it's deep. And, um, and Alex, thank you for your leadership. What an amazing moderator. And um, so just deepest gratitude. Um, I, I will just say this, I feel like just briefly, it sums up that, like I mentioned, self-determination, our own rhythm, finding the truth and sharing stories with each other helps me actually build the truth of a, of a real political education, my own analysis and healing. And I know that together in this institute, I feel like we are healing generations. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. Oh, that uh, was the punker final. Oh, sorry, Kirby. No, I was just saying love to Leslie. Yes, I know. I want to. I want to hug her. All right, the punker final word, and then we got to hand it over. Thirty okay. seconds. Go. Our our it's our field. It is our field. We don't need anybody's permission, Kirby. This is our field. And we are all the gardeners of our field. Number one and number two, money. We should be resourced. We will be resourced. You know, we are gonna break down these systems in which we see that money only exists in one place. We're gonna shift that. The money will come. The resources will come to us because labor needs to be resourced. So those are the two things. And I know that, and we call ourselves ensemble creation. It, it's a rigor, it's a muscle. Ensemble just does not stay static just by itself. Ensemble has to be worked on. So, so I'm just provoking all of us to, to work on calling it and to making it a real ensemble so that we never let anybody, no one will fall through the cracks. And that's my commitment. That's my commitment to you, Kirby. That's my commitment to the field. And, as, and, and that, that's all I have to say, that it is our field. We we shape it. Period. <laughs> yes. All right. I am feeling on fire, my friends. I think that's the perfect note to uh, all take a collective breath on that resource, on that lineage, on that power, and on that path to liberation through ensemble practice. And with that, Andrea, I pass it to you. Thank you so much, Alex. Moderator extraordinaire. Oh my goodness, she did that thing, y'all. She did that, <laughs> and you all did an amazing, uh, what a beautiful, inspiring, powerful, moving conversation. Please give some love in the chat to all of the panelists and uh, to Alex for being a fantastic moderator. Um, we are also grateful for just having this time to hear from you. I will say that um, on behalf of the organizers of the Institute Pangea and Art to Action, it's extraordinary for us to actually get to hear this reflected back, to hear what lasted, what stayed with you, what lingers, what you took home, what you continue doing. Um, I feel like we are learning so much from this conversation about what it is that we're actually doing with the National Institute for Directing and Ensemble Creation by centering people of color, by centering women identified and LGBTQ and two-spirit artists in leadership. Um, and uh, to hear that articulated by all of you is um, very powerful and moving. And I hope that it is um, something the entire field, all of you out there watching on HowlRound and our colleagues in the theater field, 
I, I really hope that you've um, been able to take with you some of these learnings and best practices uh, that this panel articulated. And um, I'm here to thank you for joining us on this journey throughout our virtual weekend, which is the first time we've ever done this with the National Institute for Directing and Ensemble Creation. And uh, we have a, a wonderful closing for you for the public um, segment of our process here on HowlRound. Um, definitely want to thank and shout out Thea and thank HowlRound, everyone at HowlRound for supporting us and live streaming um, this weekend. It's been an incredible opportunity for us to share more of what we do in the Institute, which is a, you know, essentially a closed ensemble process, even though we always live stream some events and we have community events that are open to the public in the Twin Cities. And, uh, and we always, um, want to be communicating and sharing with the larger field, but this particular weekend has been an incredible opportunity to share out thanks to the support of HowlRound. Um, so I get to introduce um, folks that we refer to as our Institute Elders. And we call them that um, not only because they are elders in our communities, but also because they have journeyed with us since um, the, the beginning, our first pilot institute gathering in 2012 and some even before, and um, been our mentors and guides and advisors and the folks that we regularly check in with and um, collaborate with as we uh, are constantly evolving new iterations of the Institute. And so as we would do in an Institute, if we were all together in a great big circle at the end of a session or a process, we would gather and we would invite our Institute elders to reflect back to us what they have seen and heard and felt and witnessed in this process uh, over this weekend. So I'd like to invite Sharon Day, Linda Paris Bailey and Nobuko to come on camera and uh, check in and see if Mina has anything to add to our welcoming of Institute elders as they arrive. Yes, um, well, it's, it's just our way of um, looking at other ways of doing this. Like really, as we decolonize ourselves within the Institute, it's also, uh, uh, giving primacy to oral ways of doing things. And also, you know, most of our cultures have storytelling as such a deep part of um, our work. And so part of storytelling is actually recounting what you're doing, sitting around the fire, telling each other, you know, what you saw that day and what you did that day and what's important and to analyze. And so uh, we believe that this is both a documentation method that is really, um, uh, you know, uh, reflecting back what's happening, but it's also a deeply personal and deeply, uh, and, and we really respect these voices. So I'm so happy they're here. We are so grateful that they're here with us in the Zoom call, in the Zoom and able to offer their reflections. Thank you, Mina. Um, so we'd like to ask Sharon Day to begin, if, uh, if that feels good to you, Sharon, and then Linda, and then Nobuko. Okay, well, um, good afternoon. I'm uh, happy to be here today. And um, where to start? I, um, I took down some notes as people were talking and um, some of what um, uh, I heard was this, um, that uh, we need the freedom um, to find our own voice, our authentic voice um, from within um, our own identities and and I think even as we find that voice within our own identity, as we learn about each other, which um, the National Institute of um, Directing and Ensemble allows us to do is we learn from each other and um, we share and we collaborate together. And, um, and one of the things I think that's so important is that by learning um, from our own authentic voices, and we share that, we're able to um, leave some of that Western uh, indoctrin indoctrination behind. And that's where it needs to stay, is behind. <laughs> uh, and our, it's time for us to tell our stories. Because, um, you know, um, those, those, those other folks, they've had uh, thousands of years to get things right. 
and uh, and they haven't. And we are in the midst of a global epidemic that um, proves um, so many of the values that they hold um, are the val those values that they hold are killing us. And that's that's not a hypothetical, you know, that's something tangible that we see. And so I have a voice and you have a voice. And um, again, the song that I quoted when we started the other day about, you know, I have a voice and it's quiet. But together we are a mighty choir like thunder and rain. And I think, um, you know, that's, that's where it's at. That's what I've been hearing. And, um, you know, as I watched my, you know, DePonker speak and, you know, and my grandson speak and all the other panelists, um, you know, Linda said uh, in the chat, you know, I'm weeping openly. And of course, um, I was weeping too. And um, just to see, um, you know, these relationships over the years um, between, um, you know, the mentees, the mentors, um, broaden and deepen, you know, that is a, um, you know, what a beautiful thing. What a beautiful thing. And so the other thing I heard was that um, theater in, is a tool um, that has so much power in those connections. And lastly, um, you know, what I've heard over these days too is in the midst of everything that's happening in the world, you know, this weekend, um, you know, this is a, a bright light, hope, you know, hope in the world of, um, and you know, and we can see the light at the end of the tunnel now. And um, when we get there, we want to get there together. So um, please um, be safe, uh, take care of yourselves and, um, and continue to um, spread love like honey. Miigwech. Thank you so much, Sharon. Uh, Linda? You know, um, thank you, Sharon. Um, thank you you all that were on the panel. Thank you, um, Mina and DePankor and Andrea and all of the staff. Can you hear me? I should check that first because I don't want this to, to go unheard. Um, I always tell young artists when they encounter something that is really meaningful to remember that these people will be with you for the rest of your life even if you never see them again. And I have felt that impact in my life. And what I've hoped to do, to try to do, is to pass that on to someone else, that, that the impact that um, artists like John O'Neill and Robbie McCauley and, and, and Jane Sapp and Rodessa Jones and Sharon and so many of the people that spoke during this weekend, the impact that they have had on me. I, I hope that you, this, this generation, um, you are so wise and so uh, committed and compassionate and <laughs> you, you have learned not to be assholes. Um, <laughs> these things are important. They're so critically important. Um, you know, I've been working on a piece that, that speaks somewhat to mortality. And, um, you know, I have thought a lot about mortality and, you know, a birthday. So I just, this weekend makes me very, very clear that as we pass through you know, we, we had better hand off whatever we know to someone else. And it's not like mentorship goes one way. Somebody said it and I've always remembered it and believed it because there are smarter people than me um, who are uh, out there 
in front of me, behind me. And the gift of giving your art and your heart and your soul um, to other people is what we hope to do with our lives. At least I do. Um, wow. I, I had an opportunity and I'll try and shut up, but I'm kind of feeling, um, when we, when Carpet Bag celebrated its uh, 40th anniversary, I had an opportunity to work with, bring back um, several directors, dear friends, uh, friends that I've wanted to work with all my life. So I, I wanna just give a special shout out to Idris and to Leilani and to Stephen and Mildred um, who re-entered my world and, and gave me such gifts and really helped me to understand how far um, we can take this, this art. Um, like I said, I better pass it on because I'm gonna lose it. Um, but thank you all so much. You are um, the gift of my life. Thank you. Sending love to you, Linda. Sending you a great big virtual hug right now. Thank you so much uh, for being my, one of my mentors, woman tours, uh, dear friends and collaborators for so many years. Thank you, Linda. And Nobuko. <laughs> Um, I don't know how to follow um, Linda, but Linda, while I'm talking, I want you to think of something that you can sing after this, okay? Or help us sing together. Because uh, I think we should sing our way out of this. Um, the, the word that comes to me right now is generosity. I can't think of a more generous space than I've been in in my life than this space. Uh, and it just, it's, it's so giving and so open and so, it, it makes me know that the, what's possible in this world. Um, What I heard that stood out, out to me was commitment to each other. And um, we have commitment to each other as mentors and mentees who are on equal ground in the circle. And we have commitment to our communities and the world at large and because we have this heartbeat that you've created for us, that we could actually feel, we can actually feel the heartbeat that you, Andrea, Mina, and Dipankar have allowed us to so gather around this fire. Sharon, Kirby, uh, to allow us to participate in indigenizing and de decolonizing not only our, our practices, but our heart. And um, that's a rare space to be in. And I feel so grateful that I can just sit here and listen and, and remove my body with, with this morning with Sandy, Sandra and, and Dora, and uh, just the wisdom of body and heart and, and political understanding. And, and also the thought came to me is that this mentorship is like, is anti-Western. This, is, this, is, this comes from our cultures of passing things down from story to, to story to story. Uh, this is the way it was done uh, through, through one person passing it on to the next. And I invited my granddaughter into this conversation to listen to it because 
um, I want her to know this, this is this. I want all young people to, I think everybody should hear this conversation whether you're an artist or not. Uh, and we are all artists, we are all creators. This is what I believe that we're all here just to create. We've been born to create. That's why we're here. Everybody is a creator. So to, to make our work is to help people believe that and that we can create not only on the stage, but on the bigger stage that we live in, a better life for everyone. So I can't thank you enough, Andrea, Mina, Dipankar, who, and also just to acknowledge that, you know, you also had to live through this terrible moment, traumatic, and I know I've lived through similar when we and when we had the LA uprising just to see see things burning, see your community burning down around you, see people dying around you. It's it's hard, and you, and I can feel that in your voice, and I can feel that in your approach right now, the the urgency that we all feel this is our moment. This work has never been more important than right now. And uh, so go to it and, and sing it and say it and, and perform it and dance it. And Linda, my roommate, who I, who I just feel is just the one who is so relaxed and so big and so her heart. I would like to ask her to sing something with us or for us or whatever. Just sing us out, please, Linda. Where are you? Um, <laughs> I'm here, sister. <laughs> I'm here, Nebuco. I'm here, Rumi. I'm still, you know, mopping it up. Um, <laughs> Linda, if yeah. you need a, a moment, we want to do a few final thanks and then you could really take us home with a song. Is that okay? Oh, oh okay. <laughs> yeah, give us a, give us a moment because we do want to uh, acknowledge all the staff and everybody who's made, really made this happen together. And I'll turn it over to Mina and Dipanka for that. And then it, Linda, if you could close us out with a song, that would be just perfect. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Andrea. And I just want to say that um, uh, this was just so moving. Thank you so much, Sharon, Linda, Nobuko. And, you know, it's you You call out our names, uh, you know, Andrea, the punk or Mina. But at the same time, I just want to say if it was, this institute would not be possible without all of you who come and participate every year. It wouldn't be possible without the advice. I mean, every year we go and sit at Sharon Day's table and say, okay, what do we do next? How should we do this? What should we do? How can we do indigenous? I mean, how can we plan ceremony? You know, and so, and that's, that's the first thing we do before we even begin the Institute. And then we also, uh, you know, talk to our African-American elders in this community and talk to them. And so we actually invoke the elders in our community before we begin this, um, uh, this, this journey. And the first person we go to, as I said, is Sharon Day. We talk to Linda, we talk to Nobuko. I mean, we, this wouldn't happen without our elders, but it also wouldn't happen without all the participants in the Institute who come here with such a generous spirit. Because it's, you know, it's one thing to have an Institute, it's another thing to come with your entire body, soul, mind. That takes a, that demands a lot of you. So I just want to thank every participant who comes here with their entire selves and participates and trusts this process to participate in this extraordinary journey that we embark on almost every year right now. So I just, Want to thank everybody who's ever been at an institute and hopefully new people that we're going to meet, new friends that we're going to meet uh, in the future. And I also want to say that this absolutely would not happen without our staff. Um, our staff is amazing. Um, it, it, they are just um, such a support, such a support for all of us. They are behind the scenes and they don't get seen, but they are unbelievably an ensemble. They behave like an ensemble, they take things on. And 
I am so thankful to the staff. And I know Suzanne is going to say a few lines and open it up to um, uh, other staff members. Yes, please staff members open your um, uh, videos so that we can see you. And I, um, you know, thank you Katya, thank you uh, Kayla, thank you Emily, Molly, um, Sarah, uh, Adlin, thank you, thank you, thank you, Adlin. I don't want to forget any names. Every single staff member has step, stepped up for this institute. Thank you, Ismail. Thank you, Tanya, who's been an amazing tech uh, for this institute. I don't want to forget names. And then thank you, Julia. Everybody did their little bit for this institute. So I just want to really thank you. I hope I haven't forgotten names. And I know Suzanne will catch me if I've forgotten any names at all. And I just, before I hand it over to Suzanne, I want to um, just thank the funders because our funders uh, fund for this particular institute have been the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation and the Doris Duke Charitable Foundation. And then we've had lots of funders in the past, but I just want to name those specially. Thank you to HowlAround for really uh, providing this space for us because this has been amazing. And now we have an archive of unbelievable things that people can watch all over and over again. They can go back and do the morning movement again. They can do the masterclass to inspire themselves a second time or a third time and uh, Dora's movement class as well, as well as watch these videos. And I know I'm gonna send them to my people in India because they better watch the mentorship, <laughs> you know, and, and just learn from all these amazing people. And um, so I'm, I'm just glad it's going to be. I don't know if you wanna say a few words before that, but- no, no, Andrea, and you said it all. Great. Gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. Great, thank you. And Suzanne and Tanya, please uh, take it away. Okay. Um... <laughs> Uh, thank you. Just thank you all. Yeah, Tani and I, we're going to come on and just make sure to uplift the staff, which Nina did a beautiful job of. Um, just again, yeah, there was just such an amazing team and really resonating the incredible ensemble practice that happens in the Institute is also this amazing ensemble practice that happens behind the scenes with the, um, with just production crew, staff, it's just incredible. I feel like sometimes we just intuitively know what we need and how to hold that with each other. Um, but I know um, Mina had mentioned, especially like Emily Meenan holding down that tech support the whole weekend with Jenny Zander as well. It's just, was so incredible. Um, Molly, Adeline, Katya, Kayla, Kayla, who I feel like Kayla, and I wanna hand it over to Tanya really quick. Um, it's really hard to sometimes find your soulmate in technical production. And I'm very honored that I've found two. Um, Kayla, who has just been here at the Institute for years and it's just amazing. And now meeting Tanya, who was just such a blessing. So I'd love to uplift Tanya's voice in this space. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you, Andrea. Uh, I see you, I feel you from here. Uh, what a beautiful example of working together in ensemble practice. Whew, I need two minutes. <laughs> uh, it's been a, an honor and a privilege to be of service in this space. Thanks for uh, trusting me to support as I'm able. Thank you so much, Tanya, for joining our team and our process and just jumping into this, um, this institute experience in this virtual weekend. And thank you to all of the staff of Pangea. Uh, thank you on behalf of Art to Action. And um, I wanna thank Dora Arreola, who's our board member and one of our founding artists as well. And uh, thank you all for joining us. I wanna tell you, I get to announce that we are planning more to come uh, that we will be having some more virtual offerings in 2021. And we hope that those of you who've been uh, it, both in institutes prior and following us on HowlAround uh, this weekend will continue to join us. So please um, connect with Art to Action, Pangea World Theater, follow us on social media, get in our newsletters so that you'll know uh, when our 2021 virtual series is coming out. We look forward to continuing this journey with all of you. And with that, I will hand it to the most wonderful Linda Paris Bailey to take us home. Thank you, Andrea. And I did not know you were gonna call on me to do this, but I, 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 I will say that this song has been just kind of going through my head and it's um, rooted in a traditional uh, song. And uh, we worked on uh, a show with Rising Appalachia uh, and 
we together created verses for this song. So I'm going to, uh, to sing this song. I am wading through deep water, trying to get home. Wading through deep water, trying to get home. Wading through deep water, wading through deep water, wading through deep water, trying to get home. I am honoring the elders, trying to get home. Honoring the elders, trying to get home. Honoring the elders, honoring the elders, honoring the elders, trying to get home. I am taking back my language, trying to get home. Taking back my language, trying to get home. Taking back my language, taking back my language, taking back my language, trying to get home. Trying to get home, trying to get home, trying to get home, trying to get home. And I offer this as a zipper song. And uh, we created, I think, probably 11 verses. Uh, about what we're trying to do. And I offer it um, for you to fill in uh, lyrics about what you're trying to do uh, to get home and to create a home for all of us. Thank you so, so very much. This is a great birthday present. <laughs>